is up, freaks and geeks? Welcome to the very first episode of the Up Late Podcast. Brought to you by Fueled When Faded. And shout out to Doughboy for making the intro to this podcast. Um, just a quick little intro. Uh, this podcast is just going to be about everything entertainment-based. Um, it's going to be me, mostly. I'll be your host. Um, it's, I'm just going to ramble to you about my thoughts on movies, video games, um, books, music, you know, and uh, whatever else you guys might want to talk about out there because I'm open to suggestions. And um, like I said, this is brought to you by Field When Faded. Don't forget to go check us out. Um, I'll put the link down in the description, but, oh, excuse me, this is episode one of the Up Late podcast, and, uh, yeah, I'm excited, and if you're wondering why I'm a little quiet right now, it's because I'm up late, and people are asleep, and, you know, it's the Up Late Podcast, so we can't be too, too loud. But thankfully, with the microphone, I can talk at a decent tone. I don't want to sound too monotone, you know. But um, it, we're going to just kind of wing this first episode like a, like a field when faded podcast. But um, the first thing I want to talk about is Evil Dead. And I want to talk about the three books of the Evil Dead universe. So Sam Raimi, the director of the original Tobey Maguire Spider-Mans, of course, and the original Evil De- first three Evil Dead movies, including uh, Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2, and Army of Darkness, um, he had his book, right? And we see three books in Army of Darkness. Ash comes across three books. Uh, Fetty Alvarez made Evil Dead 2013, the remake. It was a different book. And, uh, you know, lots of different powers, different, just different all around. And then we get to uh, this new Evil Dead movie, which is great, by the way. Um, and there's a new another new book, and it's totally different has different powers, different, um, you know, sayings, whatever, um, but I'm, what I'm getting at is I just think it's really cool that the director, Lee Cronin, decided to add that aspect and acknowledge the fact that there was three mysterious books in Army of Darkness, and the other two obviously didn't look like the ones in the newer films, but, you know, we can look past that as, as diehard fans, right? Anyway, um, about the movie itself, though, it is, it's really good. Uh, some people didn't like it, which is okay. Um, you know, I try to respect everyone's opinion. Um, but I didn't really see anything wrong with it. You know, Ash isn't in it, which is, you know, it sucks, but... He wasn't in the last one either, and I I really liked the last one, the 2013 one, and um, you know I just thought that one was fucking terrifying, and it was brutal, it was super bloody, and uh, this new one I wouldn't say is it's as terrifying, it's just really mean, it's really mean, really brutal, you know, like we're using cheese graters as weapons. That's how far we're going. Um, <clears throat> and the parallels, uh, there's a lot of parallels to the first, um, original Evil Dead to this one, like the isolation, you know, the fucking bridge collapses, well, that's in the second one, but still, the bridge collapses, and Ash can't drive out the woods from the cabin, and this one it takes place in an apartment building, like an old shitty apartment building, and, um, an earthquake happens and they can't escape and another parallel is the cellar is where they find the book in the first movie and the earthquake causes a hole in the parking lot and one of the kids from the main 
main character family um, of all our main characters, whatever, finds a book down there. Um, you know, just the parallels like that. And uh, they have to trap uh, the sister in the cellar. They have to trap the mom out in the hallway, you know, when they get possessed. It's just the parallels are there. And I don't think a lot of people see that unless they're like really big movie dorks like I am. But, you know, I just like to share that because I think it's really cool. So, uh, what else about Evil Dead Rise? Um, the intro was pretty, it was, you know, those parts about the intro. One thing I didn't like about these Deadites is they get like, it almost seems like they have the flu or something. Like they can't keep their shit together, you know? Like, I remember in Evil Dead 2, the ones that they were cracking jokes and doing backflips and cartwheels and fucking laughing. You know, these ones just, they just kind of like puke and then launch at you like a monkey. Try to attack you. But, you know, it's still a great movie. I just didn't like that part. And I think the other big thing is just the simple fact that Ash is not in the movie. But, you know, uh, go check it out. It's on HBO Max right now. I'd give it a uh, 8 out of 10. Maybe, maybe a 9. I loved it. Um, while we're on this topic, I guess I want to bring up the 2013 Evil Dead real quick. Uh, I won't go too far into it, but I, I kind of want to rate that one at 8 out of 10. Um, that one's really good too, but I think the best Evil Dead is Evil Dead 2, Dead by Dawn. Uh, that's an 11 out of 10 movie to me. It's a classic. Um, it's the movie that made Ash a hero, in my opinion. That was the peak of hero Ash, and then we got Army of Darkness where it was just like gangster Ash, you know, all his fear was gone. He was just a fucking badass at that point. But um, there was still fear in Evil Dead 2. And that's what made him more of a hero. Is because he had to conquer that fear. Because in Army of Darkness you could see he's he's ready for a witch to come back flipping at him. So he could, you know, spit it a one-liner. Shoot it in its face. With his fucking boomstick. Anyway... Yeah, go check out Evil Dead Rise. Uh, 9 out of 10 for me. Anyway, um, let's talk about The New Saints Row. Because I think that movie, ju or not that movie, I think that game just totally bombed. You know? Uh, um, comment down below if you ever played it, what you guys think. Um, but if you, if you played any of the old Saints Rows... Um, I think most most of you would agree that it was just pure shit, and it was a disappointment, and I regret spending $60 on it, and it don't even work now. I can't even play it. Um, oh yeah, what's this shit I heard about the Friday the 13th games getting discontinued? The fuck is that? Can, can anyone uh, comment down and tell me? Tell me what the fuck that's about. Or, you know what, let's just, let's just, uh, let's look that up. Let's just get on the fucking, the fucking tube here and look this shit up. But while I'm searching this, uh, back to Saints Row. Um, if you're a real fan of the original games, you know, I'm sure you could agree that this one has nothing to do with those games. Obviously, you know, it is, it's a reboot, it's a new story, and, uh, I was excited for that. Until they gave us what we got, and it's like a fucking weird fake wannabe uh, college kid party, you know? We got gangs that are just like a like an EDM band or something, is what it seemed like. You know, they were wearing like purge masks and like DJing. Uh, I remember in Saints Row 2, the gang members you fought were all very unique in their own way and not saying that's not unique it's just fucking stupid dude it's just fucking stupid i don't know uh i don't know what's going on yeah 
Yep. So it says here. Uh, Friday the 13th game getting shut down. Let's read this. This is from Game Rant, by the way, and that's a very reliable source. Um, shout out to Game Rant. Go follow them on Facebook and Instagram. They give you all the shit you need to know. Uh, so I'll read this for you guys. Last month, the developers announced that Friday the 13th, the game, will be removed from sale on December 31st, 2023. This is owing to the license agreement expiring. However, the game's servers are scheduled to remain in place until the following year. So even if you buy this game before December, you only got a year to play it. And uh, I haven't played this game yet. And um, if you guys have been on this channel from the beginning, you know that um, I'm a huge Jason fanboy. I, I wrote... Um, uh, my own Friday the 13th short story that's actually on this channel. You can go check that out. Um, it's kind of hard to listen to because imagine listening to this voice, but imagine me reading you a book. Uh, I don't know. It's probably painful for some people. And I'm sorry. Uh, I'll try to give you guys a good story, you know, but <laughs> I could be a little monotone. And uh, anyway, this is just fucking. This is crazy this is stupid um all right so i'm gonna jump i'm gonna jump onto this topic real quick and then we'll get back to saints row uh so for those of you who don't know uh friday the 13th for a long long time has been in a legal battle with the rights between victor miller and sean s cunningham which were the two uh I'm, i know sean was a original creator i'm not sure if victor came in later and just absorbed some of this stuff um i don't know i need to learn more about that situation but uh you know i'm more into jason i could give a fuck less about what's going on there but i'm getting more interested now because it's preventing us from seeing uh jason on the screen anymore and it's like dude we like we've been wanting to see fucking jason on the screen you know so, I don't know, dude. It's it's just... It's frustrating as a huge, huge fan of those movies. It's frustrating to watch this happen. But what can you do? I, you know, we can't do anything. If I was in charge uh, and someone was... Someone owned half of my character or my franchise, you know. I'd say, hey, let's let's sit down. You know, we don't have to get along, but we could be civil. But, you know, if you give a fuck, let's just do it for the fans, you know, because that's what they want. And not to mention that, it's going to make you fucking money, you know, keeping them in the closet, you know, not that closet, but keeping them in, on the back of the shelf for years because you don't want this other dude to, to touch any part of of what he helped create because you guys can't get along is just you know maybe i don't know what i'm talking about i'm only like 20 something years old but at, at at the age that they're at you know you would think like let's let's just fucking calm down and you know why not work together why don't they team up and make an ultimate jason movie why the fuck don't they just do that and then become rich together and let their kids take on the franchise. And then we get all the sequels we want in the world. I don't know. That's what I would do. Anyway. Let's get back to Saints Row. So yeah. Uh, just real quick. So for those of you Friday the 13th players out there. Uh, this is your last year. So enjoy it. Um, I might buy the game. I might not. If I do, you guys will know. But yeah. Let's get back to Saints Row. Um, I want to just type this in and look at it because this game just totally fucked all of us right in the uh, right in the face. You know, I don't want to say that. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to be careful with what I say. I don't want this podcast to be taken down right away because I know some people can't um, handle words in this day and age. And uh, I'm not going to say sorry, you know. I can handle words. 
anyway, yeah, this game came out, I think, last year, uh, or at the beginning of this year, like last January, and um, it just flopped. The story has nothing to do with the old games, and um, the old games were just so gangster, especially 1 and 2. 3 got a little weird, because then everyone became a celebrity, you know, but it was still fun. It was still really cool. And then, of course, 4 came out. And then you're the president and you're fighting aliens. And it's like, see, even me talking like that just sounds like I'm making it up. And I'm not. You go from, like, a street thug gang banging, fucking just, you know, street soldier to the president fighting aliens. Um, so you can see, I don't know if they just lost... They're good writers. I don't know. You know, I know. I know that we fell into different hands here as a com and er, different company hands. But what the fuck, guys? What the fuck? What What were you doing? What was that? You know? What the fuck was that game? Uh, I I played it. I I wasted my sixty dollars on it play it through the whole thing uh, I can't even play it now I don't know if it's the network I don't know if it's just the game itself because I bought it digitally and um, you know for those of you who know I like to collect things you know uh, especially DVDs and video games like discs um, but Saints Row is one game that I bought digitally and I can't play it um, it doesn't let me play it at all different profile new game whatever i just can't play it it won't let me and my xbox is in perfect condition so i don't know what's i don't know what the fucking deal with that is but it you know that just that's just another thing that makes it suck um ah, we're running out of time here uh anyway yeah saints row sucks let's move on don't play it. Don't waste. Don't go waste forty bucks on it. I wasted sixty because I was such a fan of the franchise that when it came out, I thought it was gonna be fucking cool. And uh, it's literally like Saints Row three, but just a different story and different characters. And um, it's just so goddamn disappointing. But um, the last thing we're gonna talk about is some upcoming movies that are coming soon. So let's look here, because I don't really know. I haven't really been paying attention to to what's coming soon. Oh, the Blue Beetle. The Blue Beetle, wow. Uh, that's pretty weird. Uh, that's, a, that's a DC character, I'm pretty sure. Or is that Mortal Kombat? I think it's DC, I don't know. Someone tell me down below. Uh, Craven, the Hunter. That looks like a fun movie to watch. Um, I'm pretty sure it's from the same producers as the Venom movies with Tom Hardy. And, uh, those movies are fucking cool. I love those movies. Uh, a lot of people, you know, they loved the first one. And then the second one came out and they're like, this is horrible, you know. Uh, why put such good actors in such a shitty movie, you know, like Tom Tom uh, Hardy and Woody Harrelson. And I'm sitting there thinking, like, what the fuck, man? Like, I loved Let There Be Carnage. I thought it was one of the greatest uh, Marvel movies that have came out in a long time because, you know, let's face facts, and we've talked about this plenty on the Field Unfaded show. Uh, Marvel has just gotten weird, you know, and... I know they're trying to follow the comics, but they're doing it in such a weird, colorful way. And I don't mean colorful in a good way. I mean colorful as in they're trying too hard to make everything look like it does in a comic book. And there's just some things that you can't translate from a page to a screen. That's why some of Stephen King's old movies didn't work. is because the books were just fucking better. And the movies just seemed stupid. But when you read it, and, you know, even artwork, when you see certain artwork, it has a vibe to it. But when you try to translate it to screen, it, sometimes it just don't work. But sometimes it does, like Sin City. Like, they did a perfect job with translating 
uh, that art style into a movie. I thought that was really cool. But anyway, uh, Craven the Hunter, yeah, that that looks like a good movie coming out. Part of the Sinister Six, which is also, uh, Venom is also part of. I'm sorry, I get sidetracked. Uh, the Batman 2, we're all looking forward to that, of course. Um, who knows what how's that's going to go down, though. Um, there's a new Captain America movie coming out. Um, I just saw a post on Facebook, too. Uh, I see shit like this all the time, though. You know, and it's usually bullshit. But apparently Robert Downey Jr. was on the set of the new Captain America movie. Um, but yeah, we are out of time here, folks. So uh, when we pick up on episode two, we're going to look at some more upcoming movies. And I will share my thoughts on them next time on the Up Late podcast. Uh, make sure, again, to go check out Field When Faded. Um, give a like and subscribe to this channel, that channel, and any other channel you think is cool because that's just what you do if you're cool. <laughs> that sounded so stupid. I'm sorry. But anyways, um, yeah, uh, thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll see you on episode number two.